this is my vlog. Happy New Year! I don't think it's too late to say that again, is it? No, of course it isn't. So, what's this video all about? Well, this video is all about fake sign writing. What do I mean by fake sign writing? What I mean, sign writing with a brush and paint, but you could do it with your eyes closed. Now, all right, that's no reflection on my own personal work. When people say, hey Trev, that looks like you've painted that with your eyes closed. No, not at all. Uh, before I start the video, I'd just like to say massive thanks to Chris Cadle from Outline Displays. Chris Cadle helped me build this amazing neon tube sign. If you'd like to contact Chris to discuss your own sign project, then his contact details are in the video description. Let's crack on with the video. This is the paper template that Chris provided me with. Now everything has been based off this, all the measurements for the sign, everything. And you can see where the tubes are going to go and where the sign writing is going to go. So the tubes lie just inside the sign writing, sign writing obviously on the outside. Now on this sign we've got four more tubes kind of outlining the sign. So we've got one top and bottom and we've got two either side of the writing. The two that go either side of the writing actually curve around a corner of the sign. It was something I'd mentioned to Chris to see if it would be possible to do and that's what he said he would do. So uh, the point of that is to try and make the sign look more three dimensional. I'm not going to be able to sign write the whole thing because of my distressed paint look the sign writing would be the last thing to go on, so the first thing that would erode from the sign. So I'm not going to be able to paint the whole thing. I'm going to have to use a bit of artistic license when I'm painting it on as well and just avoid painting some parts. This part of the sign here, I'm literally just going to put an inch of red each side because the rest is just completely missing. So to do fake sign writing, what you need is the negative of a vinyl sign. So you basically get sign writing made up in vinyl lettering that you would stick on your vehicle. But what you do is you just ask for the negative and not the sign writing. Now Chris has very kindly made this up for me because he's got a vinyl cutter and he's bought some masking film rather than actual vinyl sign writing film. He's done it a couple of times for me just in case I mess one up. So thanks very much, Chris. So what I'm going to do is get this on the sign. I've drawn some crosshairs on here and some lines on the sign that I can line up. So. If I can get that about there so that it's in the center of the masking lines, I've drawn an equal 10 millimeter distance from the tip of the letters to the end of the vinyl each side. So it all looks like it lines up rather nicely. Oh, 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 oh,
Just one final check, make sure that all the masking is nice and held down flat against the paintwork. Well stuck. Then I'm going to get some grey Scotch Bright and just run it along where I'm going to paint and the reason for this is I have rubbed it down with polishing abrasives to 1500 grit. There is a chance that the sign writing won't stick because I'm going to be using two pack paint which is just top coat paint. I wouldn't spray over the top of 1500 normally. Uh, I have sprayed over the top of 1200 when I've been doing a base coat job in silver because sometimes the metallics just don't lie flat. You end up uh, getting in a situation where you can see the rubbing down marks on some, not all, but on some metallics. Particularly the silvers and the lighter metallics. On the darker ones it doesn't seem to be such a problem. I'll just have a quick talk actually about the colour. Might as well cover it now while I'm doing this. The colour that I'm mixing up is going to be done in red. Now, if I was to do an authentic sign that was sign written in red, I wouldn't be sign writing it in red. I'd actually be sign writing it in pink. If you did, if you if you research old paints and things, um, they tend to fade out to odd colours and red will always fade out to pink. What was I saying? Ah yeah, about the faded paint, yeah. Traditionally you see, uh, reds, if they did fade, because paint technology has got so much better these days, uh, there's a lot of UV resistance built into paints, but traditionally, like a nitrocellulose or an enamel red would if it was left in the direct sunlight for years, it would indeed fade to more of a pinky colour. I'm not going to do this in pink, I'm just going to do it in the red. And there's two reasons for that. And one is because it's going to have neon tubes plastered all over it anyway. And I think with it being red or behind, it'll look a bit better. Second reason is the only red paint I've got that I can use really is the leftover red from my wheels on my Bedford van. Um, and that was left over from a Maserati Camsin that I had a part in restoring it. I restored the bodywork and um, they painted it a lovely vibrant red and there was a bit of paint left over and Steve from Race and Restoration Hi guys if you're watching, sure Raw is watching anyway but um, yeah Steve the boss at Race and Restoration very kindly let me have some of that paint need to degrease it with gloves on of course Keep those fingerprints off that paintwork. Last thing we want to do is start brushing it over and then it all starts spotting up and welling out from little bits of grease and silicon. And that's what is the problem with using car paints of course is any excuse to well away. I mean if it was like an old cellulose paint or a mammal or something and they don't suffer half as much as these two cake paints do. Right that's that's uh, okay so let's get the paint on. So just giving it a bit of a whizzle round make sure all that hardness thoroughly mixed into the paint. Right, I should think that's mixed in now. Let's 
Let's see what it looks like. See, that's quite thick, actually, isn't it? Mm, that is quite thick. So hard to know, isn't it? Got good brush marks in it though, which is what I wanted. I wanted brush marks, so let's just pour a few spots of thinners in it. Don't want a lot, just a little dab to start with, just to loosen it up. Always add stuff, if you're not sure what you're doing, just a little dab first. I don't know how transparent this stuff is. Actually, I can see, I'm going to leave it at that. I think I can brush it out thin enough. Let's just try it here. Yeah, I can see, if I brush it out fine enough, I can see the greyness of the blue underneath. So if I put more thinners in, I'm going to have a problem where I can't get it to cover. And that's going to result in me having to put two coats on. And when I put two coats on, it's going to create other issues like it will reef up. So I won't do that, I'm just going to leave it as it is because I can blend this in with a bit of paper anyway not going to put any more on than that that'll do so that's the top line finished I have to take some of this off anyway because it's it's going to be too much paint on there yeah I can see through it there so that's a good sign that means I can get it on heavy also it's led down of course so this stuff, uh, I found that the DuPont, um, the DuPont solid colours, although they're fantastic paints, it's quite unlike anything else to paint. Um, when you're spraying it, I found that you spray it on and the finish doesn't look particularly great. If you try and spray it to finish, you've had it because you spray the stuff on and you spray, you spray it on, it looks a little bit orange peely. You think, oh, I'll go a bit heavier now. You spray it on heavier. You walk away, now we're looking at it in five minutes time, the whole lot's on the floor, so. Rather soul destroying. Far better off. Kind of just letting it sit on the panel and flow out. It takes a little while to flow out. I hope this doesn't flow out too much because we're going to lose the brush strokes. I think this brush will be okay for this job because we're not covering a very large area. It's not a bad size. It's a little bit transparent here and there. If you actually look at real sign writing, you can often see what's going on underneath the sign writing if you look carefully enough. So it's going to look quite authentic. This is the planet Earth. Our planet. It is a small planet wrapped in clouds. But for us it is a very important place. It is home. But supposing we look away from the Earth and travel in our imaginations across the vast starry stretches of outer space, then we can imagine other stars. Stranger stars by far than ever shone in our night sky. And planets too. This calm, serene orb, sailing majestically among the myriad stars of the firmament, Perhaps this star, too, is home for somebody. Can we imagine the sort of people that might live on a star like this? 
Let us go very close. Let us look and listen very carefully. And perhaps we shall see. And hear. <laughs> that is a clangor. And that is another clangor. How is it for you? Enjoyable? Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Hope you got something from that. Hope it didn't go on too long. Oh my god! The video is going on too long! So, hope it didn't go on too long. Hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, then you're going to love the next episode because I'm going to be doing rustypaints.com rusty paint effect on the sign show you how I applied it if you fancy follow me on Instagram then you could win a batch of this paint or the whole kit is included to do your own rusty paint effects on your own project follow me on Instagram link in the video description easy peasy lemon squeezy just comment on the post that I'm going to do on Instagram and you could be in with a chance of winning that product plus a few other goodies I'm going to throw in out of the kindness of my own heart so I shall see you then I will leave you with the fantastic sounds of Max Stocking until next time bye for now
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.